Roller coasters, we know, speed up and slow down as they go along their track, and in particular they speed up as they fall down in the field of gravity, but they also slow down as they head up toward the top of one of the hills. In part, this is because uh, all the kinetic energy that is present when they're at the bottom of a curve is used up and makes potential energy as they get up toward the top, but in principle, there is an upper limit on, on the speed at which it can go over the top of one of these hills before it flies off. Perhaps you've had the experience of going over a small hill in your car and feeling like you lift out of your seat if, if you take the turn or take the hill too quickly. Well, in the same way, the car would simply leave the track and fly off if it went over the top of the roller coaster too quickly. In this problem, we're going to ask what is the fastest that a roller coaster can go over such a hill in the, on the track if the radius of curvature of the hill is approximately 15 meters. When the roller coaster is at the top of the hill, there are two forces acting on it. There is the normal force, which points straight up from the track holding the, the roller coaster up, and there is gravity pointing straight down. At this time, we would like the roller coaster to execute circular motion, so even if it's going at co roughly constant speed during this time, we would like the roller coaster car to be accelerating because the velocity vector will follow that circular path, and that's known as centripetal motion. So when we set up our Newton's laws, we must say that mass times acceleration equals all the sum of the forces in this direction, and we would like there to be an acceleration vector which points straight down so that the car is pointing, the car's acceleration is pointing back toward the center of the circular path. So we would say mass times the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r, equals the sum of the forces in the y direction. There are two forces in the y direction at this time, and if I am consistent with my signs, and I make the acceleration be positive if it points back toward the center of the circle, then in this case mg will be positive, and the normal force will be negative, because it points away from the circle. Now we must put in the, the, our information about we would like the fact that the, the roller coaster will stay on the track. The normal force is the force upward we feel from the track when we're on standing on the track. If we're about to fly off, we don't feel the track anymore, and this normal force is set to zero. This is something like when we're riding in the elevator at various times, the elevator floor pushes on our feet with different uh, great magnitudes of force. So to, to deduce this moment when we're about to fly off the track and when we're at risk of flying off in some different direction, we're going to set n equal to zero. In this case, mv squared over r is just equal to mg because the n is zero on the right-hand side. The mass of the car cart will cancel out, so it doesn't matter what, whether we have a heavy roller coaster car or a light one. And we find that the velocity at maximum is the square root of g times r, radius of curvature. If I plug in that g is roughly 10 meters per second squared, and r, the radius of curvature in this problem, is 15 meters, then we have that v is the square root of 10 times 15, and that works out to be about 12 meters per second, or 27 miles per hour if one converts units. This represents the maximum speed uh, over which the, car, the roller coaster car will simply fly off the track and we won't be able to maintain that circular motion anymore.